dedication. Thank the Lord for it. Uh, turn to Psalms 51 with me tonight. Tonight. Wow. It's been a long week, man. <laughs> Psalms 51 this morning. I guess I can go and announce that about tonight, can't I, Pastor? Got a reason behind it. I'm going to give an update on the trip tonight. So be thinking if you have any questions. Be thinking today. No matter what it relates to, to the people, to the place, to the cost of things, to the future, to the plan, whatever it is, you, you guys just come up with some questions. And Lord willing, I'll do the best I can to answer them tonight. So. Psalm 51. Uh, this is a psalm many people attribute it to David, uh, dealing with his sin with Bathsheba, and that's as good as anything I've got, so that's what we're going to go with. Look at Psalms 51, verse number 1. The Bible says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in, in, in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure to Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Brother Jeff Thomas, you pray for us, brother. <clears throat> Sin's about, the psalm's about David's sin, but the title of the lesson this morning is The Mercy of God. Uh, despite our sins and despite our shortcomings, the mercy of God can be found. And uh, I thank God for that. Uh, here we have David, and David is sin, and it was a grievous sin. And the thing about sin, sin is not confessed and forsaken, it just compounds itself. Right. It's like interest. It grows. So what you start off with, if you don't get it taken care of, it's going to compound interest and it's going to grow and grow and multiply and you're going to wind up with more than what you bargained for. That's how sin operates. That's why the Bible says, confess your sin and forsake and you shall find mercy. So David here, he had sinned and we know the sin was with Bathsheba. That's how it started. 
Uh, he saw Bathsheba and he wanted her. And she was married and he was married and he took her and it was, uh, it was adultery is what it was and that's wicked in the eyes of God. Right. Adultery is wickedness. That's what it is. But to cover it up, David had to turn to other things. He wouldn't confess it. He wouldn't forsake it. So he began to try to cover up. Uh, if you cover your sins, uh, you just can't. It doesn't work that way. You have to come clean. So David began to try to cover, and it wound up turning to murder. He murdered Bathsheba's husband, Uriah the Hittite. So it was adultery, and it was murder, but it was not only that. Hold your place here. We'll come back and turn to 2 Samuel chapter 11 with me. So this was this is what we're going to look at. I believe it was the greatest sin. And we tend to look at the deed many times. And you know what? We should not do wicked deeds. It's wrong. But we tend to look at the deed and just stop right there. Well, look at 2 Samuel 11. Look at verse number. That is not it. Look at 2 Samuel 12. There it is. Typo. Look at 2 Samuel 12, verse number 14. So this is Nathan, and he told, God told David, he said, you sinned, you've done wrong, and because of this, this child you're going to have is going to die. But look at verse 14. He said, how be it, because this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Now, we know the child went to heaven. That's what children do that don't understand right from wrong and went to heaven. But the cause of it, according to the Bible, wasn't the adultery and it wasn't the murder. It was because this man that represented God's people had given God's enemies cause to blaspheme by his sin. By his deeds, he had in a way justified what wicked things they were saying about God. So it's not just the deeds that we do, the sins that we commit or what's wrong. It's the fact that when the Bible says when we name the name of Christ, we should depart from iniquity. We're not going to live a sinless life the rest of our days here. But when we do sin, when we do fall short, we need to get it clean before God and not let it compound and give God's enemies occasion to blaspheme against God's people some reason, people kind of around here kind of don't like our church anyway, right? You know, you hear some good things, but you hear a lot of negative things, right? We don't. It's the way we carry ourselves, and it's the way we believe the Bible is what it is. So when we slip and we fall, you know what we do? Uh-huh, told you. Uh-huh, told you. And they're blaspheming against God. Let me show you something else uh, about this episode. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 15. And I thought this was interesting. You know, you study your Bible and you read and you know the stories and you know the scriptures, but sometimes something will just pop out at you and God will show you something because it's a living word, right? Now, we know this was wrong, this thing David did, right? But it was not the only wrong thing David did in his life. Right, he was, he was a great king. He was a man after God's own heart, but he just did some incredibly stupid things from time to time, wrong things, sinful things. He numbered God's people and got 75,000 of them killed. I mean, just, right. just sinful things, right? But let me show you something. Look at 1 Kings 15. Look at verse number 5. Because the Bible says, because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. When it come right down to it, the only thing God brought up against David was this matter with Uriah. That's how serious it was, and it compounded itself, right? But sin separates from God. Now, lost people, it has separated that relationship, and we know that. 
Lost people do not have a relationship with God. With saved people, we have that relationship that cannot be broken. But you know what sin does? It'll separate our fellowship. We won't have the joy that we should have. We won't have the peace that we should have. Turn back to Psalms 51. Let's look at what David said here in this psalm, what this sin had done to him in his life. Look at Psalm 51. Look at verse number 2 with me. David said, wash, wash me throughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Look at verse number 7. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. You know what it did? It made him feel dirty. It made him feel dirty. This sin's what it did. Not necessarily on the outside, but on the inside. You know how you've been out and you're working all day and you're sweating like a barred mule and you're just nasty and filthy and just, I cannot wait to get home and take a shower and wash all this off me. You feel dirty, right? When sin gets into your life, you know what it is. You got that feeling, but it's on the inside. That's what happened to David. That's what sin does to people. Not on that, look at verse number eight with me. It says, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Now, the best of my knowledge in the scripture, never, never said where David had any broken bones. What he's talking about is no joy. He's broken on the inside. No joy in his life. No matter what he did or tried to do or tried to put into his life to bring about joy, he had no joy because his fellowship with God was broken. Look at verse number 10. The Bible says, Creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. His heart and his spirit was bad. He had a heavy weight on him, laying aside every sin and the weight which does so easily beset us. I know what happens when you get sin in your life. A Christian, a born-again person, they get a bad spirit about it. You know, you get... You, you, you've seen it. You've seen people and you don't know what's going on yet, but they all of a sudden pop up one day and they have a bad spirit about them. They're not talking right. They're not laughing and joyful like they used to be. And it's just a heaviness. It's like a black cloud just following them around. Like old pig pen on peanuts. Y'all remember him, the old nasty boy. Just Every time he, he just had a dust cloud around him. That's what they're like. You know what it is? They're sin in their life. And they got a bad heart, and they have a bad spirit about them. And before you know anything's going on, you can look and tell something's wrong there. Something's wrong with that person. That's what sin will do to you. Not only that, look at verse number 11. The Bible says, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Now here David, he's concerned about losing his salvation. And David at this time could have lost his salvation. This wasn't hypothetical. There was no new birth, Colossians chapter 2, like what you and I have. Now, we can't lose our salvation. It's impossible. For church age, this dispensation lose their salvation, but you can lose your fellowship with God. That fellowship can be broken. You know who the most miserable person in the world is? It's a Christian out of fellowship with God. Them lost people in this world yucking it up, they miserable, but they still like it. They like part of that stuff. They hate it when they wake up because they feel bad, but boy, when, but when they're having that good time, they like that thing. But you know what? A Christian, there's something inside of them that cannot like that. There's something inside of them that needs that fellowship with God more than Job said he needed his necessary food. And when that fellowship's broken and God's not talking to you and you're not talking to God and that fellowship's not there and you can't get that comfort and that power and that peace that you need and that joy that you need, you talk about a miserable person. That is a born-again person out of fellowship with God. Look at verse number 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. No joy in salvation. No joy in service, no joy in worship. You get a Christian, a born-again person that has sin in their life, and it is going to be like pulling teeth to get them to go down to the church house. 
They're just not interested. No, we wake up and glad to go down to the church house. Uh, you get a Christian that's out in a fellowship with the Lord, he wakes up and he don't have no problem going to work, God forbid. But you can't get him to come down to the church house. It's just miserable for him. There's no joy in salvation. There's no joy in service. There's no joy in worship. But, and this is the state David was in because of his sin. Well, look at verse number one. David said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. David had done these deeds that you and I honestly could not imagine committing. And his fellowship with God was wrecked, and it was affecting him physically, but he found mercy when he turned to God. I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt based on what this Bible says, God is a merciful yes. God. He's a God of mercy. He is a God of grace. And I don't care what's coming to a Christian's life. I don't care if what's happened. And there may be consequences for the sin in your life. You may not get out of that. But mercy can be found with God. The first mention of mercy in your Bible is in Genesis 19 and 19. And that's Lot. When he's fleeing the city, he deserved to die. Yes. That's what he had earned. But God allowed him to live. That's what mercy is. Not getting what you deserve. And I found it interesting that the first mention, Genesis 19... That whole episode was dealing with sexual sins. That's what, the, that's what Sodom's known for, right? Psalms 51 started with sexual sin. I think that's a spe special warning to you and I that even as born-again people, we need to be careful where we go and what we do and right. what we watch and what we say. Right. Not getting what we deserve. Mercy can be found with God. Now, let's look at a few things that God's mercy is. Uh, turn to Lamentations 3 with me. Lamentations chapter number 3. God's mercy. Try to read the book of Jeremiah. Look at Lamentations chapter 3. This is one of the, when I first got saved, this is some verses that I found. I discovered them. And that thing helped me. Young Christian, you want to do right, and you're stumbling and fumbling and bumbling, and you're still working with your concentration, and you find verses like this, and it'll just help your life. Look at Lamentations 3. Look at verse number 22. The Bible says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. You know why we're here this morning? Because God's merciful. That's, right. That's just it. Yeah. Uh, I heard a man preacher say one time, he said, if God don't breathe out, you can't breathe in. The very breath in your body comes from God. Well, how do you know that? How many people know just fall over dead? What happened to them? Don't know. Doctor can't find nothing wrong. They just fell over dead. It's because of God's mercy that we are here this morning. That verse says, His compassions fail not, they are new every morning. You know something about God's mercy? It never gets old. No. Never gets stale. Never goes back. Did you know there was an expiration date on bottled water? I can't hardly understand that. Yeah. yeah. Things expire, don't they? Even these elements that have these long half-lives, millions of years, they expire, right? God's mercy has no expiration date. It never expires. Young people can get it. Middle -aged, young people like me can get it. Middle-aged people like some of y'all can get it. 
old people can get it. God's mercies, they're new every morning. It never gets old. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter number 2. Ephesians chapter number two, talking about God's mercies, the mercy of God. He never get old, don't expire. Not only that, look at Ephesians two, verse number four. The Bible says, but God, that's some great words in your Bible. Well, you look up them but gods in your Bible and that thing will get you out of the dumps, man. It says, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. And the thing about God's mercy, he's rich in it. You can't exhaust it. No. You cannot exhaust the mercy of God. Well, I don't know about that. How many times have you sinned since you got saved? How many times have you and I done something that God should have just blinked us out of here for? But you know what? He was merciful. How many times before we got saved? could we have very easily been dead and gone to hell? I got things flipping through my mind right now that happened to me and that I did, and I probably should have been killed and dead. But you know what? I was, well, that's a lost person. That's right. God's merciful. He's merciful to all. You cannot exhaust the mercy of God. The Bible says he is rich in it. Not rich like men. Great is thy faithfulness. That verse says in Lamentations. Turn to Titus chapter 3. One more. Titus chapter number 3, talking about the mercy of God. 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus. Chapter number 3. Verse number 5. Titus 3 and 5. The Bible says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now here in the context, it's speaking of salvation, our spiritual salvation, right? Being born again. But turn to 2 Samuel chapter 12 with me. Let me show you something. 2 Samuel 12. In the context of the scripture, this mercy is speaking of the salvation of our souls. God's merciful to us, and he would be willing to save our soul. Turn to 2 Samuel 12. You know what God's mercy is, though? It's spiritual, thank God for it. But it can be physical also. Look at 2 Samuel 12, look at verse number 13. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. You know what God's mercy will do? It's spiritual. It's mercy he saved us, the Bible says. It'll save your physical life also. You know what we do to the drunks and the drug addicts and the lost people out in this old world? We preach the gospel to them. You know why? Because that mercy and grace of God will not only save their soul, it'll turn their life around. You know what happened to your life when God saved your soul by his mercy and his grace? It turned your life around, didn't it? Hey, some of us, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt in my mind, and we hadn't got saved when we did, we would not be here today. Some of us would be dead and in hell. No doubt, the life we were living and running and ripping these roads happens all the time. You see it all the time. I'm seeing it now. I got to where I'm a black widow. I check the, the obituaries all the time. Checking obituaries, man, black widow. And I'm seeing people in my age dropping like flies. Late 40s, I, I turned 50 last Sunday, 50 people I went to school with, my friends in school, and it just died. Some of us accidents, right? 
Some of them, they've been, they, they, they've been on drugs for 35 years. Some of them's drunks. I had a man I went to school with a while back, and I seen he had died in the, in the paper. It didn't say what he died of. He was a year younger than I was in school. And talked to a friend of mine not long after that. He said it was weird. He said, is there a restaurant? And he was so drunk he couldn't stand up, and he and his wife were leaving, and he fell leaving the restaurant and hit his head, and they put him in the car. When they got him home, he was dead. He said, that was just weird. I said, man, that wasn't weird. So that was sin. You know what God's mercy will do? It'll save your soul. It'll turn your life around too. It is by the mercy of God that we are sitting right here in this place, clothed in our right mind, have families, have children. It's just, it, that's what it is. Yeah. Nothing, nothing we have done to earn this life that we have. Not one single solitary thing. God's mercy. It never gets old. You can't exhaust it. And it'll save your soul, but it'll save your life also. Okay, people allow sin to come into their lives. It just happens sometimes. People let down their guard. Devil comes in. Before you realize what's going on, bam, he's got his claws and grips in you, right? So many people... What they do is they run from God when they should run to God. They get beat down. They get ashamed. That's what it is many times. They're ashamed. They're saved people. They know God's saved them. They've been in church. They've been involved. And things come into their life. You know what they do? They get ashamed and they run from God. They love their sin. They love that addiction. Mm -hmm. They love that person. They love that pleasure so much that rather than run to God and do whatever's necessary to get that fellowship restored or rather than run to the mercy of God, they run from it. Adam sinned. He walked with God in the cool of the evening in the garden. He sinned. You know what Adam did? What did he do? He ran to hear from God, didn't he? Yeah. Because sin came in. I want to encourage all people. If you're lost, you need to be saved. The mercy of God can be found. Right. If you're saved and there's something in your life that's affecting your joy, it's affecting your peace, it's affecting your service, it's affecting your worship, I don't care what it is, it is not worth it. And if you come to God, he's a merciful God, and he will forgive, and he will restore that fellowship. One more scripture, and we're going to close. Turn to Psalm 86. My favorite verse in the Bible. Psalm 86. I used to want something on my tombstone, something about uh, that verse about John. Everything he said about Jesus was true. That, that's just about me. Somehow I ain't never said nothing false about Jesus. I don't want that on my tombstone no more. I want this verse right here on my tombstone. Look at verse 8, Psalm 86. Look at verse number 15. The Bible says, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy Amen. and truth. Amen. Know what our God is? He's fair. He is just. He is loving. He is kind. And he's going to do exactly what's right. You know what he'll do for a person that rejects Jesus Christ? He will cast that person to hell and won't think twice about it because it's the right thing to do. But you know what else he'll do? If any man, any man, any man or woman or child will come to him, I don't care what kind of heinous deeds they have done, he will forgive that person and save that person. And if it's a child of his they've done wrong, he will cleanse that person from all unrighteousness. 
because he's a merciful God. Brother John, you close this, brother.